Hello, Howard Hanna. Welcome. We have a, uh, a huge group today for the lovely Chris Gunn. Hello. We, we have to wait for, uh, we're going to give it a couple minutes for those of you just jumping on. We've got uh, close to 800 people that have registered for Engage 2.0. Wow, look at these numbers, Chris. I know, it's going up. It's crazy. I'm so glad we're using Zoom instead of my conference software because this would not have worked. <laughs> <laughs> so while we're on, and I will, um, I will remind everyone, um, if you have not been on a company-wide webinar with us uh, since we've been doing these in March, um, we have a few little um, kind of guidelines that, that we'd like to address. Um, typically with these kind of training ones, we will uh, try to create an FAQ from all the questions that you guys are, are asking um, throughout the process. To do that though, you do need to put your questions in the Q&A, not the chat. Uh, the Q&A just allows us to download it after the fact and fill in answers and just refer back to things that people are asking. So even if we do ask them or um, answer them live in the webinar, we do want to be able to create an FAQ after the fact that would be shared along with this webinar, because typically the first question is, is this recorded? Yes, this is being recorded. Um, so questions in the Q&A, please. And before I pass it over, um, I'm going to introduce really the two people that probably know the product the best. Um, I will uh, just start with our in-house um, Kevin Patai. He's director, I don't know, digital marketing. He does everything with Moxie, basically. So um, <laughs> he is, uh, he's been working with Chris on this. Um, if you don't know Kevin, there's lovely Kevin who's joining us, who has told me to do all the introductions. And Chris Gunn is our contact from Moxie Works. I know everyone has to recognize Chris Gunn by now between every webinar and uh, Hannah, Hannah Khan. Um, we are so thankful for all of these trainings. Again, questions in the Q&A, um, and uh, I guess that's, and I'm Kate Lasour, I'm the Director of Training for the Midwest, and we'll be training on this again next Wednesday for our Wednesday webinar. So if you want it again, it will be available uh, Wednesday, and this is being recorded. That's all I got. <laughs> okay, well then I guess I'll take over from here then, Kate. Thank you for the introduction. Um, thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time to, to go over some of the updates that we've made. And so you should be seeing my screen right now uh, where I'm starting out on GoHanna. I'm just gonna use Kate's uh, account as the example for today. Uh, and we are gonna spend a lot of time talking about Engage, uh, but there's some other really cool features that we've, we've made available that I actually wanna introduce you to first. And so to, to walk through our agenda for today, uh, we're going to be talking about the My Brand and Signature features uh, that have just recently been added. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about some of the updates that have happened to Engage. Uh, and then we're going to do an introduction of campaigns, which is the email marketing portion of Engage. And I know that I've talked to, to groups about this multiple times at Hannah. Uh, we've said it, it's been coming, and it's been coming, it's been coming. So it's actually here now. Uh, so I, uh, I'm excited to introduce that to you guys all, all today. And so uh, just to go ahead and get started, uh, from GoHanna to get to our first, uh, our first new tool, which is the My Brand feature, uh, to access that, you just hit your drop down over here and go to My Account. When you click on My Account, it's gonna take you to a window that looks like this, which is your uh, profile for GoHanna and MoxieWorks. And, and in that profile, over on the right-hand side, there's a little bar that says my account. It might be collapsed when you land on it the first time, but you can just go ahead and open it up and it'll say my account. And underneath that are a few different options. It's your, your profile information, um, the office that you're in, being a, able to uh, allow account access for, for others, um, setting up text notifications for your, uh, for your new leads as they come in to engage. And then below that is a new feature um, that's called My Brand. And so we're just gonna actually click on My Brand and, and I'll introduce you guys to this. And so My Brand is actually uh, a way to, to help make sure that your branding is appearing the way that you want, 
uh, across uh, all of the Moxie products. And the first thing that I'll introduce is our new signature templates. Um, so previously, the signatures that came out of Engage looked a little bit like this. Uh, they, they also pull in your title, um, but we've updated those signatures to include uh, some additional information to, to look a lot better. And we're gonna apply those to every email that gets sent to your clients from the Moxie work system. And so to, to look at these new signature templates, you just click this little drop down and hit templates. Uh, we're actually going to default everyone to this top left align template, um, but you can choose a different version if you want. And so there are a few different versions here uh, that are available. And to select a version, you just click uh, the bubble over that version. And so as you'll see here, uh, it's pulling in Kate's photo from roster, the company name, her, uh, her role at the company, um, as well as phone number, website, and email links. And that's gonna apply to the bottom of every email that's sent uh, out of the system in MoxieWorks. And so we're going to, to set a default of, of left align, but you'll actually be able to go in and choose your own um, and edit that as well if you'd like. And so that's one of the first features that we're introducing today is the new uh, signature feature. Uh, the next one that we're gonna introduce today is actually uh, a personal logo feature. Um, and so this actually gives you the ability to upload your own personal logo uh, that'll apply to PDF and web presentations in HANA presentations. Uh, so if you have a personal logo that you use or, or you're on a team that uses a personal logo, you can actually upload that logo, either a dark version or a light version, um, or both, if you have both, uh, right here. And that'll make that logo available for you in HANA presentations. And so, to upload the logo, you just click, uh, select the logo from your, um, select the logo from your desktop and then save it. Uh, and that'll be visible here. And like I said, you could do that as a dark logo for light background or a light logo for dark backgrounds. Um, to be able to leverage this in HANA presentations, we've actually added a new section in HANA presentations where you can include your own logo uh, and co-brand on a presentation. And so where you can find that is in HANA presentations uh, under the edit button. On the pages tab, if you click down on the presentation, uh, there's a section that's called branding. And in branding, you'll now have a new option uh, underneath additional logos for a personal logo and it will show how your logo looks co-branded next to the Howard Hanna logo or your franchise logo. And so once you've got those logos updated, you can go ahead and hit apply and that'll apply to your presentations. If you save a template with a personal logo applied in it, um, you can use that over and over again without having to apply that logo every time. And so a really cool way to, to be able to brand yourself uh, along with Howard Hanna and, and your franchise. Um, just to really get your, your own sort of personal stamp on all of your materials as they're going out. Okay, and so I'll pause right here. I see we've got some questions in the Q&A. Um, are you getting them, Chris? Are you? Okay. Yep, I'm looking at it right now. And so the profile images are a little bit stretched. Uh, it's the aspect ratio on the photos. Uh, if you have a 4-3 aspect ratio on your photo, it's going uh, to look a little bit better. Um, instead of saying sales associate, can we change it to a different title? We actually get that title from the feed that Howard Hanna provides us. Um, so I would talk to, uh, talk to the Hanna team support on how, on how to handle that. Um, how do you edit the signatures? Yours has errors. Um, once again, the information in the signature is coming from the feed. And so I'd follow up with Hanna support on the information that's being sent in the feed so that you can, so you can update that signature. Uh, Karen asks, is there a way to add a slogan? Um, we, we are releasing this templated feature first, um, but we also have developed a, a feature to allow a custom signature. And we may, we may release that uh, for you guys in the future where you could potentially add a slogan there. Um, that's gonna be up to the team at, at Hannah and Hannah Marketing. Um, are there professionals that will help us create a logo? Um, actually, there, there are 
a few really good free online resources that can help you create a logo. Uh, fantastic logo creators in the Adobe cloud uh, do a really great job, but I, I would contract somebody locally and sit down, uh, sit down with them, talk to them a little bit about how you uh, envision your brand and that can help you form your logo. Um, is this, and so Pamela asks, is this just for digital marketing or you can, or can you create print pieces as well? And so th uh, that logo will also be associated to any of your uh, PDFs that come out of HANA presentations. And so you can also use uh, that logo, not just on the digital version, but also on the print version. Um, and Paul asked, my personalized logo is a vertical type picture. Uh, are you able to put in a vertical versus horizontal? Uh, because a HANA logo is horizontal, it, it would look best with a horizontal logo next to it. Um, I would say take a look at what it looks like in the system and, and, and see if it's actually gonna work for you. We don't have the ability to, to do a vertical logo now just because of how the spacing in presentations works uh, on the header. Uh, could you insert a personal pic that way too? Um, yeah, there's really nothing stopping you from using a pic instead of a logo there. Uh, so if you wanted to use a photo instead of a logo, uh, you would be able to do that. It will show, it will show relatively small up in the top uh, left-hand corner of the presentation. So um, photos with a, a really clear focus on the subject would probably be better. I, I would recommend trying, trying it out first, seeing how it looks. Um, and then you can take it out or change it if it doesn't look the way that you like. Okay. Any more questions on the logo signature feature? All right, looks like we're out of open questions there. Um, so I'm going to bounce over to some of the more exciting stuff that's been released in our uh, in Engage. And so for those of you uh, that have used Engage frequently since we've launched it, uh, this is going to be a whole new look. For those of you that are landing on Engage for the first time today or haven't uh, taken a lot of time to look at Engage, uh, this is going to be uh, this is this is going to be an exciting change. And, and so you'll see the Engage dashboard. Um, this is the updated Engage dashboard. It looks a lot different than it had previously. Um, so before it was a, a few green squares and a rectangle with your calendar, uh, goals module, the sales flow, and people down at the bottom. Um, we've, we've done a lot of work recently to update the, the look and feel of the dashboard, and we've added some additional modules as well. And so I'm going to walk you through all of the modules that are on the, on the dashboard now. Um, and then we'll also talk a little bit about uh, the sales flow. We'll talk a little bit about tasking uh, and then dive into some of the cool new functionality that comes along with campaigns that help support all of this stuff. So up at the top of Kate's dashboard, you'll see our first new module, which is the stay in flow module. Uh, the stay in flow module is designed to be a reminder to reach out to people uh, that you may have fallen out of contact with or haven't spoken to in a while. And so uh, the stay in flow module basically will surface five people to you uh, to reach out to. And, and it'll do that every single day. And as you reach out to people and mark them off uh, and, and check that you've reached out to them, you can actually add an activity uh, so that you can see what type of outreach you had. And so, for example, we'll take Catherine B here, um, and I'm going to click Reach Out to Catherine. It's going to give me a couple of options right down at the bottom. First, I can send her an email directly from here. So if I click Email, it's going to open up my email, uh, my email compan, and I can write her an email right from here and send it off. It's going to look just like a regular email. Um, and I've also got some of the some of the. Uh, font options, bold, WYSIWYGs, the ability to insert a link here, which are some new additions to our email platform uh, from, from what it looked like previously. And so I can send her an email, or if I want to, I can reach out uh, by sending a neighborhood news. And I'll have both the quick and custom features available to me. Um, so for those of you that have used Engage before, the quick feature is the zip code based neighborhood news uh, where you just clack in a zip code and they're going to receive a monthly touch point on listings in that in that zip code uh, on the same day every single month the custom feature allows you to create a custom boundary 
um, and add some additional search criteria to neighborhood news to really hone in on the exact listings you want to show somebody. Um, so being able to use that quicker custom feature really easily to reach out to somebody uh, is, is a, a big new addition here. Or let's say I decide I, instead of calling or sending a neighborhood news or shooting an, instead of shooting an email or sending a neighborhood news, um, I'm going to give her a phone call. So I jump on the phone with Catherine. When I'm done on the phone, I'm going to go ahead and mark her as done. And I'll get this other activity log that pops up that says, hey, what did you do with Catherine? Um, I sent her a phone call and called to catch up. And I can just go ahead and log that activity right from here and complete it. And once I log it, it's gonna check that off. And you'll see right up at the top that this little check mark is filled in. Um, as I go through these and mark people off my list and actually catch up with them, um, these check boxes are gonna fill up. Once I get to five, it's gonna give me a, hey, you did a great job message. And then surface five more people for me to reach out tomorrow to tomorrow. Uh, when I land on my dashboard. So I the way a ton of questions on this stay and flow, just this first option. So I just wanted to bring your attention to that. Okay. Yeah. And so I've got a couple more things on this that I wanted to talk talk through with you guys, and then I'll I'll look at the question log in a second. Um, and so the stay and flow module pulls people in based on a, a few different selections. And you'll see there's a big green cog over in the corner here. And this is how you set up your stay and flow module. So whenever you see a, a cog in engage, that means there are some settings that you can manipulate. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this green cog. And actually I can decide uh, who the stay and flow module is surfacing to me. And so if I wanna reach out to people that are uh, past buyers, prospects, or leads, or that have come into my system new uh, every 60 days, I would just set uh, set my cadence to be 60 days, select who I'd like to reach out to, and that's who's going to be surfaced to me in the stay and flow module. And so I can go in and edit this whenever I want. I can set it for a cadence of 30, 60, or 90 days. If you have a whole slew of contacts, I recommend setting it for a longer cadence um, so that you have time to, to reach out to all of those people. Um, or if you want to really narrow in on exactly who you want to follow up with, if you want to focus on your past buyers, past sellers, and new leads, you can do that as well. And so uh, loads of options for you here. Let me go ahead and put Kate's settings back the way they were. And it's as easy as going in and changing those options for whatever's going to work best for you. And that is the stay in flow module. Um, I'll go ahead and pop over the question log now. Where do the stay and flow names come from? Uh, Greg is asking. And so the stay and flow names come directly from Engage. And so what it's whatever the name of that contact is in Engage in your email. Um, are you able to add attachments, Teresa asks, for email? Um, no, you are not able to add attachments right now. We are releasing a feature in the next two months to be able to add attachments and photos uh, into, into the email sent via the, the email companion engage. Um, when you send an email from engage, does it sync with your sent mail in Exchange Outlook? Uh, yes, it will show in your sent mail in Exchange and Outlook. Um, is Outlook, yep. Okay, and then what's the source of the names in Stay and Flow? Those are the same ones. Uh, if they're already set up in Neighborhood News, by hitting the Neighborhood News again, Will it send one out at this point and then again, or the usual monthly cadence? It, it will create a new neighborhood news for them. Um, and so it'll create a new subscription with a new cadence. Uh, but their existing su subscription will still be there. And so you, you just be creating a second one for them. Uh, all right. If I miss a day of my five people, do they stay on or drop off? Um, they stay until you've, until you've gone through them. Um, so unless you mark them skip or mark them done, they're going to be on there just as a reminder for you to reach out. Uh, Mary asks, when is the team version of this going to be available? We do have some team features that are available. Um, and so I, I wasn't planning on talking about those today, but we do have some team features that we're going to be rolling out to you guys later this year. 
And will email sync with Mac mail uh, is what Pamela asked. And so primarily we're gonna sync to your Howard Hanna email account. Um, and, and so no, not directly to Mac mail, uh, but if you have your Howard Hanna email account connected to your Mac mail account, um, you'll be able to, to see the interactions in there. Okay, I think I've rolled through all of those questions. Uh, so let's jump into the next module, which is the activity feed. And so you'll see that there's no activity in this. Um, and basically what the activity feed shows are uh, different categories of system activity. So we'll actually come back to this as, uh, as I start playing around with stuff in Kate's account. Um, but it'll show email activities, presentations that have been looked at uh, open, viewed, uh, and anything automated done by the system for you. And so any automation that you're using will actually log an activity and you'll be able to see that here. Uh, so this module is a really good way to show how the system is doing work for you. And so as I go through and start fiddling with things in different, in the test accounts I've set up in Kate's Engage account, uh, we'll actually come back and take a look at some of those activities in the activity feed. All right, the next new module is the to-do list. And so there are two different to-do lists here. First, I'm gonna start with my tasks. And you'll see that there are a couple of tasks added in here um, already for, for Kate. And so I'm actually gonna mark one of these off uh, because we've done the, the training, we're doing the training on Engage now. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this task complete. And it's gonna go into my completed bucket of tasks. If I wanted to add a new task for Kate, um, which would be send Chris a bottle of whiskey. And we're gonna add that task for her. Um, and I, I'm actually gonna put this on Kate's calendar to help remind her. And so I, I'd like her to do this probably, let's, let's call it for Friday. Uh, give her a little bit of time. She can connect this to me since I'm in her account. Uh, just by typing my name, it's gonna look me up versus all the other Chris's in here. So she can connect this task to me and even add it to her calendar um, so that it's gonna pop up on her calendar. Uh, on her Howard Hanna calendar, if that's connected to her phone, she'll see it on her phone uh, in a couple of days. And so uh, once I've set that task up, I can just click back and that task is gonna be right there on my task list. And so this is cool because it's, it's a good way to set up my things to do today list. Uh, so we got a lot of feedback that transaction tasks are great and being able to, to pull in tasks from a transaction are really useful when you're working on one or two transactions. But really what people wanted to do was remember what are the things that I have to do today? And so do I have to, to go meet my client for a buyer tour? Do I have to go pick up the dry cleaning? Do I have to go pick up one of the kids from school? And I need somewhere to be able to put my to-do list for the day that I can come back to over and over and take a look at it was the feedback that we've gotten. And so what we did is we created this task list um, to allow you to, to add tasks that aren't transaction related, um, but are still part of your day-to-day -day, your day -to -day life um, in a place where you can see them on your dashboard, you can go to them easily. And so that's what, uh, this add a task in the, uh, the my tasks module is just gives you a chance to, to create your own task list of things that you want to get done in the day. So you can mark it off. It's basically a, a replacement for the post-its that might have been on your desk. And then transaction tasks are actually going to pull in all of the, the tasks that you have on your open transactions that you need to work through. Um, and those can be added to your calendar from here as well. You'll see that there are some overdue tasks and these are all marked in red here. All right, next thing is the calendar module. Hey, hey Chris, before we get into that, let, there's a handful of questions on, uh, okay. on, on the tasks. Cool. Um, so back in the module, are we able to have simultaneous one set, say 90 days for buyers, 60 days for sellers, or another category. Um, right, and so that is on the stay and flow module. Uh, right now, it's just one cadence, uh, but as we get more feedback on the module, we, we are gonna allow for some, for some changes in how that cadence is set. It's just so new that we haven't really had a, had a chance to get feedback 
on, on what's going to be the most useful yet. Uh, Jaina asks, can you send a text, me uh, text message through this? No, not currently. Um, so we do not have a text integration. Uh, does the activity feed include real scout activity? Um, partner activity can be shown in the activity feed as well. And so anything that's go going to show in, in the activity feed on, a, on an individual profile uh, can show in that uh, activity feed module. Um, Molly asks, can you add a task list from outside Engage uh, where then it's merged into the task list? I'll actually come back to that uh, because we, we've made some updates to the global task list and we're doing some further updates to that. So I'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, if I update revise a task on my phone, will that revision sync back to engage? Um, if you update or revise a task in your calendar on your phone, it'll sync back to engage. Um, this is also a mobile responsive website. So if you wanted to bring up your task list on your phone and engage, you could do that as well. Um, where are all of these CRM tools? Uh, Joanne, that's, a, uh, that's engage.gohanna.com. You can access it from, uh, from Gohanna under agent tools. And so you'll see on my screen, I'm on Gohanna under agent tools, uh, engage CRM is one of the ones in the list and you should be able to access it from here or you can access it from this bar up at the top where it says engage CRM. Um, do the tasks in engage sync with dot loop tasks? No, they do not. Will calendar tasks sync with iCal and Exchange calendars? We do sync uh, with your Howard Hanna calendar. And so your, ex your Exchange email from Hanna, we sync with that calendar. Um, is there a way to connect your Google Calendar to Wait, this? Chris, can I just add to that for Crystal's question? I wanted to let everyone know that I just looked at my calendar. And on Friday now, it tells me I have to buy a bottle of whiskey for Chris Gunn. So it's already on my calendar. Um, and it's on my phone. So I wanted to put that in the chat, but I thought if people were curious, um, he added it and now it is there. So it syncs. Um, is there a way to connect your Google Calendar to this? Uh, not directly to the calendar module. Like I said, it, it does sync to your, your HANA calendar. But if you have your Google Calendar synced to your, uh, there is a way to sync your Google Calendar to your HANA calendar. It's a little much for me to explain on this webinar. Um, but there, there is a way to do it. And Tom, awesome. Nice. I like that. <laughs> cool. And so we'll move on to the next module, which is the sales flow. Um, and just to give a quick refresher on the sales flow, uh, think about, think about uh, the sales flow as the process of closing uh, a deal. And so it starts off with marketing. Uh, where you're, you're basically reaching out to your sphere to see who's interested in potentially buying or selling in the next three to six months. Uh, when somebody raises their hand and says, hey, I am, I, I'm ready to get in the market and list my home. Um, I'm not ready yet, but maybe, maybe in the second half of this year, uh, I, I'd be interested. Then they become a prospect. You might want to more seriously market to them, target a little bit more, send them some additional information about mortgage rates, maybe some additional information uh, about how to prep for selling. And then when they're ready and they give you a call and say, hey, come do a CMA for me, I'm ready to sign a listing agreement, that's when they move to active. And then once you have a contract in hand, you're waiting for close, that's when somebody would move to pending. And so the sales flow is really just a way to track where people are um, in your business at, at any stage of a transaction. Once you've started actively marketing to them, and really getting information out in front of them about buying or selling. And so the, the reason I'm bringing this up is the sales flow module um, is pulling off of how you categorize people in the system. And I'll, I'll walk through this in a little bit. Um, and, and those categorizations can actually now kick off some automation for you. And, and that's one of the big bonuses of campaigns and the addition that we made campaigns that I'll talk about towards the end of this, uh, that you can really use where someone is in the sales flow to kick off a whole string of automated emails 
that are really going to help move them through the process really easily. Uh, make it seem like you're spending a lot of time reaching out to them without you actually doing very much of anything at all. Uh, so I'm really excited to show you guys that as we continue on through this webinar. The next thing is the goals module. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because the, the goals module basically tracks your goal for the year and your progress towards that goal. Looks like Kate's been doing really busy training, uh, so she hasn't gotten a lot, of, uh, a lot of opportunity to close a bunch here. Um, but uh, for those of you that have already closed some transactions this year, you'll see the goals module is populated uh, with your transaction sales volume so far this year from the MLS. Also, uh, there's an option here if you'd like to be able to hide the sales volume dollars uh, so that other people, if you're using, say, a resource computer, can actually see what you have entered in your goals module. And then last but not least is my listings. And actually, we're going to be able to pull in all of your active and sold listings here uh, so that you can see just uh, in a quick snapshot what active and pending listings you have, as well as what listings you've recently sold uh, that are attributed without leaving your dashboard. And you can actually click into those listings uh, to do things like send a listing announcement. One of the other cool features of this new dashboard is it's customizable. And so right now the order is sales flow, activity feed, to-do list, calendar. But if Kate decides, hey, you know what, I'm really just interested in seeing my calendar right now, it's as easy as dragging that up to the top of the list so that she can see the calendar instead of the sales flow. Or if she wanted to spend some time working on her stay in flow module, but really the to-do list was the most important thing for her, she can drag her to-do list up to the top and see what's on the to-do list. And this is gonna stay for the next time that she logs in. And so you can order your dashboard to look however you want so that when you log in the next time, the most relevant thing to you is going to be on the top. You can move those around at any point. And if you wanted to check something out without scrolling, you can just click on that item and we're going to automatically just jump you to that section of your dashboard. And so really, really the big focus for us was making it easy to use, giving you some additional flexibility, but working towards turning the dashboard into a one-stop shop to know what you've got to do that day, what you're working on, uh, to really make it easy. Okay, and so I see there's a few more questions in the chat. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at that. Um, do we have to add transactions to the sales flow or do they automatically sync with the MLS? And so when a transaction closes, we see the sales volume close in the MLS and we'll update your goals module automatically. But if you wanna be able to do things like kick off a just sold campaign, to a client, you do have to add that transaction to their client's profile. Uh, why don't contingent and under contract listings show in the sales flow? Um, and so that would be that would be the pending category is contingent, contingent or under contract. Um, it, we didn't break it out in such a granular way, uh, just because it, it's the the nomenclature is different from different parts of the country. Are sales that were HANA exclusives included? Uh, mine does not seem to include HANA exclusive sold. And so it's anything that we can pull in via the MLS. Uh, so if it wasn't on the MLS, we wouldn't be able to pull it in. But listings do pull in automatically based on your MLS ID. Uh, that's how we serve the listing. So if it's not in the MLS, we wouldn't know about it. Um, but if it's a HANA exclusive, it should, it should show as long as your MLS ID is associated to it. If you have other issues with that, I would recommend contacting support, um, either through this little pink help widget or via email to, to see if they can square that away for you. Um, I have six active and pending, it only shows four. How do I see the whole list? You can actually click on view all in that, in that listings and it should take you to uh, a panel in your profile that, that's called listings that'll show you all of them. On my listings are pending, Oops, okay. Tell us about drip marketing to clients and newsletters. I will get there, anonymous attendee. Um, how do I get my MLS to be primary with engaged share? My newsletters are all messed up due to feeding from the wrong primary MLS. And so, uh, Teresa, I'd reach out to, to our support team to get them to help you out with that. Should be really easy. 
Uh, so if an under contract listing isn't showing, should we contact support as to why? Uh, as long as it's associated to you in the MLS, it should be showing. Um, once again, yeah, stuff like this is really good to reach out to support about. They're, they're excellent at being able to find answers for things like that for you. Um, and like I said, you can reach them through this pink help button. There's also a chat feature so they can see exactly what you're talking about. And so one of the, one of the best things that you can do is hit this get in touch button and it'll give you a couple of options, one of which is live chat. And they can actually see the screen that you're looking at when you use that chat feature. So it makes it a lot easier to explain uh, what you're trying to find rather than trying to go back and forth via email. Hey, hey Chris, just a note on that. Um, I don't know, some people may not have noticed, but that help button is anywhere on GoHanna. Um, that, that's a GoHanna page. So when, you, when you're on the homepage of GoHanna, that help button is there. Um, and uh, when, when you do see, when you have questions about a, a listing not showing up in, in your Engage account or anything like that, you know, know that Moxie support is there to help you. Um, and we actually have a, you know, we could show you later in the, in the presentation, a landing page with where their, what their support email address is, their phone number as well, so you can call them. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. Yep. And so from here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop off of all the active and contingent listing questions. I think uh, some of those are, are going to one making sure going to be one making sure that all of your MLSs, all of your MLS IDs are in your profile. Um, and two, um, support in a lot of cases can help you look for those and, and re-sweep them in or associate them for you uh, if, if you're not seeing them in, the, in your dashboard currently. Okay, and so from here, I'm gonna jump out of the dashboard and get to some of the, uh, some of the neat new stuff. And so first, um, I wanted to go to the task manager. There were a couple of questions about task manager. And um, first, I, I wanted to, to let everybody know that we've actually gone back into the task manager and updated the tasks that are in here uh, because we got a lot of feedback. There were just too many tasks. They were so they were too granular. And so we work with the HANA team to pair that back uh, to make the task list a lot more basic, a lot more easy to manage. And so to, to get to the task list, um, you click this little gear icon to go to engage settings. And that's going to take you to your preferences panel. And in that preferences panel, you would select task manager. And it'll highlight itself green. And so the task manager, currently we have four marketing plans. We're gonna be adding some more marketing plans towards the end of this year um, and the ability to fully customize and create your own marketing plan. And I saw a question for that in there. Uh, so that is a capability that we're gonna be adding this year. Um, but right now the four marketing plans that we have in here are one for leads. And so this is a marketing plan for people that you don't know uh, that have come across your neighborhood news link or have come from your website. Um, you've never met them, but they've submitted an inquiry and that dropped them into engage. And so that's gonna be your leads marketing plan. Uh, there's the basic marketing plan, which are for people that you do know, um, but you'd like to actively market to. And then there's a plan for buyers and sellers uh, to get them all the way through the transaction once, you, once they've become a prospect. And so I'll, I'll just pop into this leads marketing plan and click customize. And that's gonna give me the ability to change anything in this plan uh, that has a red X next to it. And so previously, a lot of these, uh, these tasks were blocked and you weren't able to remove them, um, but we've updated it so the majority of the tasks are removable and all of the tasks are editable. And so you can go in and say, hey, add Kate social media. Um, instead of day one, I actually wanna change the day on this and do this on day two and click update. And it's gonna update that for any new contacts uh, that I get as a lead. Or if I decide that, uh, you know, this urgent ASAP task, I, I don't actually do that. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that from the plan. Um, and it'll take that task out of the plan. Any new lead won't show that task. If there's something that I want to add um, that is unique to me that I think Will, will help me in my business or I know that is one of the reasons people choose me as a realtor, I can add that task uh, by either creating a brand new one of my own 
And so I can create my own new task. And decide when that's going to go out. Or I can select from this task list. And so we have a list of all of the available tasks that we've gotten uh, from years of research working with different brokerages um, here for you to choose from. And you can actually search through the task list as well for anything that you might like. And then once you're all set, you can go ahead and save that task list and it will apply to any new contact that comes through as a lead or that gets categorized in the future. And so I'm gonna cancel this so I don't wreck uh, Kate's existing task list. Same thing with the, uh, the custom marketing plan, buyer and seller plans. You have the ability to, to customize the entire task list down to the things that are really just the most important for you. And you can do that for different parts of the transaction. So if there are certain things that you do when someone's active, say you've never mailed a gift uh, after somebody signed a buyer agreement, you can go ahead and remove that from the plan um, so that it won't show up as a task for you. And so uh, we've made these a lot more flexible than they were before. So you can go in and edit, play around with it. Um, and I really recommend those of you going into Engage for the first time or that haven't been in Engage for a long time, uh, go through, edit your task list, change it to be, to be more reflective of how you do business. Uh, and then work backwards through categorizing people, adding the people that you're currently in the process with that are, that are pending, your current actives, um, so that you can actually start seeing some of the benefits of this uh, right away, as opposed to having to wait the three, six months until they raise their hand and are, are ready to transact. Uh-oh. So you see that there's warning. two questions on the task list for you. Got it. How soon will the customizable task manager be available for both buyer and seller plans? Uh, we're targeting before the end of the year, um, but I don't want to. I don't want to give a date and be a liar. Um, I have created and customized my tasks prior to the update. Uh, will they be already added to my customized task list? If you've already customized your task list. Uh, then I don't think we've overwritten it. Um, so your custom task list should all should be there. Um, we did this. We did this update actually weeks and weeks ago uh, to the task list. We're just talking about it now. And if my listings not my listings, how do I get it added? Once again, that's uh, a, a one to follow up with our support team on. But also make sure all of your MLSs are associated uh, to your account. And so uh, as long as all of your MLS IDs are associated to your account, uh, we should be pulling in all of your listings if they're in the MLS. Ah, neighborhood news. Any uh, shows neighborhood news uh, has been sent out. Is there any way to see who it went out to? Um, yes, and I'll show you that. Uh, I'll show you that as well. And so you guys are just getting a little bit ahead, a little bit ahead of me, but I like it. Okay. So the reason we talked about task lists and moving people through the sales flow is because that will actually trigger items in a campaign. Uh, so I, I actually wanted to show you, uh, to show you a little bit about task lists and transactions um, before we jumped into the, uh, to the campaign center, uh, just for some additional context. Okay, so I've created a, uh, a person in Kate's account called Testy Testerson. Um, and Testy Testerson is now going to be a client. And so I'm gonna say Testy Testerson's a client. Uh, I'm gonna create a marketing plan for Testy. And it's gonna give me a few options. Is he a past seller, past buyer, past buyer and seller? I just met Testy, so he's none of these. So I'll go ahead and create that plan. And it's going to pull in uh, Kate's to-do list. And so that list that we were just working on in the task manager, it's going to go ahead and pull in uh, these tasks. And so at any point through this process, I can jump Testy ahead. And so say I just met Testy today, uh, two weeks from now I get a phone call and he's like, hey Chris, I really enjoyed our conversation. Um, I, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to be listing my house in towards the end of October. I really want you to stay in touch with me. I'm gonna let you know when I'm ready. I can actually just jump 
Testia over to prospects and say, Testia is a buyer. If I know what, what the MLS number for his house is, I can key it in right there and we'll pull the information for that listing in. Um, if I don't know, I can just leave it blank for right now and click done. And so what's this, what this is going to do is it's going to jump Testy over uh, to a buyer, create a buyer transaction for him, and then also uh, pull in a new updated task list for me just to help make sure I get all the way through, uh, through to active. What it can also do is moving Testy from marketing to prospects uh, can kick off a campaign to keep him warm while I'm working with my other buyers that are closing. And so it can kick off a, a six week campaign to send him emails about the listing process or the buying process uh, automatically without me doing anything for the next 60, 90 days. And so I'll show you, I'll show you where to set that email campaign up in a moment. Um, but I, I wanted to point out that moving people through this transaction flow can actually kick off marketing campaigns on your behalf um, and automatically send emails to them. And so at the end of this transaction, when testing goes pending, and let's say my estimated close date is tomorrow, and this transaction closes, when he goes pending and this transaction closes, um, I can actually, when I close this transaction, I can kick off another round of automation to send a thank you note, to ask for referrals, to ask for a testimonial request, to send a 60 day follow up, a 30 day follow up, a 90 day follow up, um, all automatically by closing this transaction and marking Testy as a completed buyer in my system. And so the reason why the sales flow is great is because it can do things automatically for you just by moving someone through it, um, which is one of the reasons I wanted to talk about it today. Okay, so from here, uh, I'm going to actually just bounce straight into campaigns because um, talking about the, the task list and the sales flow all reference campaigns, so I may as well show you what it looks like. To access campaigns, you'll see uh, at this top bar, I've got a new uh, section here called campaigns. I'm gonna just go ahead and click on that. And that's gonna take me to my campaigns dashboard. And so there are two panels on my ca campaigns dashboard. The first is my campaigns and the second is my emails. And so first I'm gonna focus on campaigns. Campaigns are different than e-cards. And I know that you guys are very used to e-cards uh, a single send of maybe happy holidays, a happy 4th of July, where you can put in a message, send it to one person or send it to 50 people. Um, so eCards is great for that one-off send. And I, I believe the eCard system is gonna continue to persist for, for a while um, as we continue to build out some of the functionality here in campaigns. Campaigns are different though, because they send out a string of emails without you having to interact with them at all. And so when I set somebody up for a campaign, say a holiday campaign, for example, they're gonna receive an email um, for New Year's Day, they're gonna receive an email for President's Day, they're gonna receive an email for Valentine's Day, uh, St. Patrick's Day, 4th of July, Labor Day, uh, Halloween, uh, Hanukkah, Christmas, without me doing anything, except adding them to that campaign. And so how do I get these campaigns? I'm gonna add them from my library. So to get a campaign, I'm gonna go ahead and click add from library. And it's gonna pull up a library of all the campaigns that uh, Moxie's created, as well as the campaigns that Howard Hanna has created. And so right up at the top, you'll see a Hanna holiday campaign. And the source of that campaign is the brokerage. And so to look at it, I'm gonna go ahead and click preview. And you'll see here is my preview of the email that would go out for Labor Day. And I can look at the next 21 holidays and see exactly what email is gonna go out, uh, what graphic is gonna go out, and how that's gonna look in somebody's inbox before I decide to add that campaign.
And so very similar to e-cards, but instead of going in and picking an e-card for every single person, um, I can actually just start a campaign that goes out to everyone. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this campaign to my library because of course I wanna send out a holiday campaign. So by adding that campaign, it's moved to the status awaiting setup. And so what this means is I now have a couple of things that I can do with this campaign. Uh, first, I'll point out that there's this little word down at the bottom that says synced, which means any updates that come to this campaign, I'm gonna get automatically. Oops. So if the HANA team decides uh, to continue this campaign through 2025 and just keep adding content to it, I'm gonna get all of that new contact as long as my campaign remains synced. So if I don't do anything except run the campaign and add contacts to it, it's gonna stay synced. I'm gonna continue to get the updates uh, from now into forever. One of the other things that I can do though is I can edit a campaign. And so if there's a certain email in a campaign that I don't really think I'm going to send out, um, I can click edit and I can actually remove that email. And so if I'm looking at the email, I'm like, you know, I really, I really don't send out Thanksgiving emails, right? Um, or I'm not going to send out daylight savings time emails because I think daylight savings time is ridiculous. I can actually just delete that daylight savings email uh, by hitting that little trash kind of icon and pull it out of my campaign. And so I have the ability to edit those campaigns to take out some content if I want to as well. Uh, I'm not gonna do that for this one though. And so as soon as I edit a campaign, it breaks the sync between the, the campaign provided in the brokerage and my copy. It becomes my own copy of that campaign. Um, so I can edit and update it as much as I want uh, but if the brokerage adds emails to it, I will not receive their updates. The good news is I can have as many copies of a campaign as I want. And so if I wanted to customize one and do my own set of holidays and maybe take out some of the holidays or, 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 or notices that I would never use, I can easily do that. And then if I also wanted to use the company version uh, for another set of contacts, I could do that as well. So to add people to a campaign, what I would do is click on the campaign name, and that's going to take me to uh, my setup. And so it'll take a little, little spin. And so it'll give me the ability to add people to my campaign. So to add people, I can just click add people. And it'll give me a quick walkthrough, but I'll do the same thing. It's gonna show all of my groups that I already have built in my account. And I know that Kate spent a lot of time working with everybody on, on the importance of groups. And so I can add all of my groups here just by selecting plus to add a group, or I can add individual people to a campaign by typing their name. Right. And when I'm ready to send my campaign, I can go ahead and click next. It's going to say, here are your selections for the holiday campaign. I click save and it will add those people to the campaign for me. I can update my campaign list whenever I want, so I can continually add people to my campaign if I want to. Um, and then when I'm ready and everybody that I want to have added to my campaign is there, I can just hit run campaign. And that's gonna kick my campaign off. Once I click run campaign, it's gonna move it to the running section and then I'm going to be able to see the open rate and unsubscribe rate for that campaign. So I'll be able to see how many people have opened that campaign, how many people have unsubscribed from that campaign. So I can gauge whether or not I want to keep that campaign running. Um, if I decide, you know, this campaign isn't performing the way that I want it to, I can click back into it and pause it, which will put that campaign on hold and keep other emails from going out. So I can click pause right here to hold the campaign and keep it from going out, or I can archive the campaign, which is gonna stop it entirely and not send out any more emails from that campaign. So if I click pause, it'll update and show in my paused campaigns panel. And you'll see that it's moved to paused. And then when I'm completely done with this campaign, 
I can say, you know, I'm not going to run this one anymore. I'm going to archive it and it'll move it to archive. So part of the reason why we do this to, to leave a campaign in archive instead of just deleting it is so that you can see who was assigned to that campaign and what the open and unsubscribe rate was. Another cool thing that's happened now is that uh, because I downloaded this campaign, I now have a selection of emails that I can edit. Um, and so when you download a campaign, you also get all of the emails that are associated with that campaign and you have the ability to edit them. And so say for, for my campaign, I want to change uh, or maybe add a message on the first day of summer. Right. And so um, I can click edit and that's actually going to take me to the ability to set up uh, to set up the email. And so from here, I can edit the name and say, let's call this my edit version. I can edit the name so it's easy for me to find. I can change the setup and so I can change the subject line or maybe I want to include the company header. So I can change the setup there but I can also edit the email content uh, using this really cool drag and drop builder that we created. And so say I wanted to add some additional content uh, to this email, what I would do is I'd grab a row and we've got a few different row configurations. And anybody that's familiar with a MailChimp or Constant Contact has seen a builder like this before. I can drag a row over and just drop it, drop it in my template, there we go. So I drag a row over and then I can put content in those rows. Um, so I can say, you know, I want this one to have some text. I want to put an image in this one. And I would like to maybe put a social share link in this one. Or even better, maybe I want to put a listing in this one. And I can type in an MLS ID search for a listing and add a listing even uh, to this email. And then when I'm all done and I've got my email the way that I want, I can hit continue and save, or I can send myself a test email to see what it looks like. And so um, you can't create an email campaign from scratch, but you can edit uh, an existing campaign and the existing emails in a campaign to create your own version. All right, I know I've probably generated a whole bunch of questions, so let's see what we got. Uh, do you recommend removing someone who unsubscribed from all emails or leaving them in engage? Um, and so really that's, that's up to you. Um, I recommend leaving them because we won't send to them if they're unsub if they've unsubscribed from everything. We won't kick anything new off to them, uh, but they might resurface and say, "Hey, actually, I want to get some additional information." And if you get another email address for them, uh, maybe they'll they'll want to resend that unsubscribe. So I think there's no harm in leaving uh, leaving them in there uh, if they've actively unsubscribed from an individual campaign or from all campaigns. We're not going to send it to them anymore. Are the auto marketing campaigns or f are free or do we pay for them? Uh, Hannah bought them for you. And so they're free to you, but Howard, Howard Hannah uh, definitely paid for them. Is Testy both a buyer and a seller? How do we do both campaigns? Um, you can actually have multiple transactions and the transaction itself uh, can kick off a buyer version and a seller version of the campaign. So you can do both or you can go in and edit the campaign to make it uh, to make it a little bit more flexible. Sharon, can we create our own campaigns? You cannot create your own campaigns from scratch, but you can duplicate and edit existing campaigns. And I'll, I'll, I'll show the best practice for that in a second. Is it possible to select all your contacts? Yes, it is possible to select all of your contacts. Uh, Pamela, does unsubscribe just unsubscribe the person from that campaign or receiving any future emails from me? Um, they get the option. And so they get to decide whether they want to unsubscribe from that particular campaign or from any email from you. Um, and so they, they get the option to decide which one they want to do. 
is there a way to select your people if they're not in a group? Uh, yeah, it's just using the people panel, typing in their name, and that'll pull their information up for you. Abigail asked, uh, do these email chains from year to year? Uh, so they're different the next year. Um, yeah, and so the HANA team, some of these are going to be evergreen campaigns where they'll be different from year to year uh, and continue going. Like I said, uh, they, they built out a holiday campaign that goes through 2022. Uh, we've built out one that goes through 2021. Uh, both of those are available to you. So uh, it, it really is very flexible. Lots of info here. I'm on overload. Will there be more training? I am sure that Katie is going to spend a lot of time training on this. Next thing. Wednesday, everyone, next Wednesday. And I'm trying to answer your questions as you, you say them, Chris. You talk just as fast as I do. I'm getting like carpal tunnel. <laughs> um, next Wednesday, that's the um, what, 19th at um, 10 a.m. There, you'll get a notification. I'll be teaching this again along with other automated systems. Yep. Uh, Nita asks, after I edit a campaign, will I be able to access the templated version in the library for use with a different group? Yes. And so you can download as many, co or you can load as many copies of a campaign as you want. Um, so you can have multiple copies of a campaign if you'd like. Uh, let's see. So if someone unsubscribe, already went to that one. Uh, it doesn't include e-cards. It would just be for, for emails coming from Engage. Um, so I can save Hanukkah on one and label Christmas on another. Yeah. Yeah, you could, you could take one campaign that has Hanukkah, one campaign that has Christmas, and basically split your groups up that way. Uh, will it not duplicate recipients if it's in two groups? Uh, we, it is possible to potentially send a duplicate campaign to someone that's in two groups. Uh, we do dedupe that. If they're going to receive the same email on the same day, we won't trigger it. Um, but it is possible to have groups cross over. So if I had 900 people that aren't in a group, I would have to go and type all 100, 900 names to add them. Can't add them all at once. Actually, you can bulk add, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, would we use holiday campaigns instead of e-cards? Yeah, um, you could totally use holiday campaigns instead of e-cards so that you don't have to do it individually. You could just do it in bulk. Where can I find step-by-step -step instructions to add contacts? Um, the little help button down at the bottom, you can just go ahead and type in uh, add contacts. And our support bot will actually look for articles that relate uh, to adding contacts. And so importing your contacts into Engage with a video tutorial, it'll pull up any articles that, uh, that could potentially help you on that. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Uh, when you send out a campaign to a bunch of emails, does it go to the person's junk or does it work like MailChimp and go to their inbox? Um, and so everybody's inbox is going to work a little bit differently. Uh, basically, email systems are are trained to think 90% of emails are junk. Uh, so if somebody has mark, if somebody is receiving email from you and marks you as, a, uh, as somebody they trust, it's gonna go to their inbox. Um, if they take emails like the one that you're sending regularly and send them to junk, it's gonna go to junk. Every email is trained differently. Uh, we did spend a lot of time building up the reputation on our servers. Um, and this is an important thing for being able to send emails, probably a bit of a digression. Uh, but the reputation of the sender server for the email actually matters a lot uh, for, for whether or not the email lands in an inbox or junk. And we've spent a lot of time working on the reputation for ours. Um, but if you don't want it to go to junk, don't make a habit of sending emails to people uh, that aren't actually going to, to look at them. So if they're not people that you actually know or not real contacts, the chances of them sending your email to junk or reporting them as junk is higher. So the next time it hits somebody's inbox, it'll be more likely to go there. Um, so you each have a personal reputation for the emails that you send. And so spending time making sure that you're curating who you send your emails to improves that reputation. 
Is there a campaign for home anniversaries? No, there isn't, but there's an automation that's set up for house anniversaries. Um, and if we have time at the end of this, I can show you where. <clears throat> uh, will the individuals in a campaign see any of the others that you've added? No, they will not. Um, can you edit a file and rename it? Yes, you can. Um, since we can only use Howard Hanna email, uh, can we connect our calendar to the Howard Hanna calendar and sync there? There is a way to do that. Uh, can you create a new holiday like National Donut Day? Um, yeah, you can. And so I'll show you one of the best ways to create your own, uh, to create your own emails in the system. And so it's kind of a workaround until we release the agent facing version. Um, but I'll actually take National Donut Day as, as a challenge to create one for. So to do that first, let me get a picture of a donut. So let's grab a picture of a donut from Google. Google Images, beautiful. Uh, open image, new tab. Oh, that's too small. Hold on, give me one second to grab a good picture of a donut. That's a fantastic one. Open image, new tab. Okay. And so uh, one thing I will tell you is if you're gonna be sending emails, make sure you own the image and that you have done all of the right copyright work to make sure that you can send this image. I'm just gonna grab this donut image for, for example purposes, but if you're sending emails, make sure that the, the image is either open source or you're licensed to use it. But um, that being said, now I'm going to create uh, a donut day email. And so from here, I'm going to grab this 4th of July HANA campaign and instead of editing it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit duplicate. And to get to duplicate, I just click the three dots by the side and you'll see it made a copy of that email for me. So now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and edit this email and I'm gonna edit the name. And instead of 4th of July, I'm gonna call this Donut Day. And hit save. And so now I've got my donut day email. I'll edit the setup. Happy donuts. Let's call it happy calories. Hey, hey Chris, while, while you're showing this, I just want to uh, make a quick comment that um, you know, the marketing department has created a, a, an enormous amount of um, holiday social media. Uh, images that you can actually use to create something like this. Yep. There's like, they have been prolific about making content. I've been super impressed with Kevin and your team on just how much stuff you guys have created in the system. It's, it's amazing. And so I recommend everybody, uh, when you get new engaged and start looking through campaigns, go preview all of the stuff that they built for you because they've spent a long time working on this. But back to this donut day thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. I'm gonna pull over a piece of content. And so let me start with a row. I'll we'll drop a row in. I'm gonna do an image. I'm gonna click in, upload my image. Uh, let's just take it from here. Drop my file in. Okay. So there's my donut image. And then I'm gonna put some text down at the bottom underneath. I've got a full text editor here. So let's say, happy donut day, exclamation points. Let me make my size obnoxious and then center. All right. And then I can preview my email from here. There we go. Happy donut day. And if I wanted to save that, I can just go ahead and hit continue. 
hit save. And now I've got a donut day email that I can add to any campaign. And so if I wanted to, uh, I could go in and edit a campaign and add my donut day email to that. So if I look at my archive campaigns, I can go in, edit. And if I wanted to swap out one of these holiday campaigns for my donut, cam my donut day campaign, I can just go ahead and swap it out. Does that answer your question? Hey, hey Chris, can you, um, and, and maybe you, we're gonna get to this and haven't yet, but can you go over two things for me? Can you show them um, the Moxie created campaigns that um, when, when you move somebody in the sales flow, yep. um, what those are? And also, um, I wanted to speak quickly about the newsletter that we are offering now. Yep, absolutely. I was going to go right over to, to the, uh, the triggered campaigns in a moment. So great timing on that. Thanks. Um, can you duplicate an email into a different campaign? Yes. Um, is there an image folder in Engage where you can load marketing assets into? No, we do not have an image folder in Engage uh, with marketing assets, but like Kevin said, they, they've created an asset folder. I believe it's on Gohanna, and Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, um, where you can access all of these images as well. Yep, that's correct, Chris. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you add a lead to a new lead campaign and then you move them to active or pending to the flow, do they get removed from the lead campaign? Um, yeah, it will stop the, it'll, it'll take them out of the, the lead campaign and then move them over to the new, to the new campaign. Uh, but you can also do that manually. <coughs> so uh, from here, let's, let's talk about uh, some of these triggered campaigns. So I'm going to go ahead back to my library and it's going to load all of the campaigns for me. And there are a few that are triggered, uh, triggered by MoxieWorks. And so here's an example of one uh, or two of them, uh, warm buyer prospects and new leads. So I'm going to go ahead and preview warm buyer warm prospects and so this is a plain text email campaign that just sort of makes it seem like you're reaching out to somebody that's a prospect um sending them some some useful information and so i'm going to go ahead and add this to my campaigns and now that i've added it when i click into it i'll be able to see what triggers this email and so this is, uh, this is a pretty important thing to know, um, is what is going to trigger an email to go off. And so this email is triggered by moving, oh, sorry, wrong one. Warm prospects. Sorry, even I click the wrong one sometimes. Okay. And so this is a short-term nurture campaign for prospective clients and it's triggered by moving somebody from marketing to prospects. And so the, the campaign is automatically triggered that way. So if you add this campaign and you move somebody in the sales flow from marketing to prospect or put somebody in as a prospect, they're automatically gonna have this campaign assigned to them. And over the next six months, they're gonna receive this string of emails. So that's one of the, automatic, the automatically triggered campaigns. Another one uh, that's in there is the new lead campaign. You can set that up for a new lead coming into Engage to automatically trigger some emails for them uh, as soon as they come into, in, in, into Engage. Uh, but the, the best one, I think, is the recently closed buyer and seller campaigns. And those are triggered by a transaction closing in the MLS or you closing a transaction in Engage. And so if the transaction's associated to a contact record and it closes in the MLS, we'll see that um, and we'll automatically kick off two days later. A thank you for, thank you for listing with me. Um, a week after that, they'll get a referral request. 14 days later, they'll get a testimonial request. 30 days after that, uh, they'll get a follow-up and then 60 days later, they'll get a follow-up. And so these are the really easy things to forget to do in a transaction automated for you uh, just by looking at, hey, this transaction associated to Chris has closed. He was a seller. Let's kick off the seller campaign for him. 
So Chris, if I'm an, uh, I'm going to say I'm an agent today. I'm an agent and I want to, I, I don't want that particular campaign to go off to a, a, a new lead for whatever reason. Um, how do I turn that off or how do I turn that on? Got it. Um, so there are a couple, there are a couple of things that you can do. Um, if you wanted to go off, if you wanted to go on automatically, um, you would just move it to running, right? And so if you want to trigger it automatically for anybody that, that moves in the sales flow like that, you would just hit run campaign and it'll automatically run it. Um, if you don't want to trigger that campaign, you don't want that trigger to be, uh, that, that campaign to be triggered automatically, you can decide to not download it. Um, it's probably the easiest way is to just not load it and it won't be triggered because it's not in your library. Or you can edit that campaign. Where it's going to show what the trigger is. Um, you can edit that campaign to actually, sorry, I take it back. Um, you can't edit the trigger in this one. So the best way is to just not add people to it automatically um, to, is to not run it. If you have it running and somebody closes or moves in the sales flow, it's, it's going to trigger. Um, if you want to say take them out of that campaign, it's triggered one email and you want to remove them. Um, you can actually just remove them from that campaign or remove that group from the campaign um, as an individual. Or if you wanted to start someone on this campaign that you've worked with in the past, or that you're planning on working with, you can add them manually without the trigger kicking off. So there are a few different options there, um, but if this campaign is running um, and you move somebody in to, from uh, marketing to prospects, it will kick off for them. And so uh, just be aware that that is, that is an automation. That's, that's where one of the values of this comes from, it's being able to automate it. So if you don't want it to do something without your uh, without your input, don't run the campaign. Thank you. Cool. Is there a list of triggers for these auto campaigns? If you click edit, and that's what I was looking for, if after you download the campaign, if you click edit on the campaign, it'll show you what the trigger is. And so the trigger here is buyer prospect, transaction moves from marketing to prospects. And so when you move somebody, from marketing the prospects and the transaction flow, this would kick off automatically. And so just click edit and you'll be able to see what the trigger is. Um, there are only those four triggered campaign, uh, five triggered campaigns in there. Um, so I, I don't know, I, I like the, the warm prospects campaign and the buyer seller campaigns for closed buyers and sellers. I think if you're going to run any of the any of the automated campaigns, you should definitely run those because it's just those follow-ups. People really appreciate them, and it can garner you a testimonial that might help you get the next listing. So I would actually recommend running the the past buyer, past seller campaigns. Okay, and then the last thing that I want to talk about, and Kevin, um, I'll I'll turn this over to you before I jump into how to do all of this stuff in bulk is the, uh, some of the campaigns that are available via Moxie. So we've got our own uh, happy fun puppy version of the holidays that's available to you guys. It's got some merge tags and text in it already. Um, so it'll, this will send out automatically just like any of the other holiday emails. Um, but the HANA team has actually spent a long time working on a fantastic newsletter. And so I wanna, wanna show you that as well. Is that the trending at home? Yep. Perfect. And so we'll just go ahead and pull up the newsletter. And like I said, they spent a lot of time on some fantastic content uh, that links to blog articles. I, I don't want to gush about it, but Kevin, do you want to talk a little bit about, about this campaign? Yeah, um, it, we, we, you know, we heard loud and clear that agents love the newsletter, the monthly newsletters. And, um, you know, so Moxie campaigns format gave us that opportunity to to supply that to our agents. Um, so when when we found out that we were going to be able to launch campaigns, um, we we worked pretty hard to to pull these together for you. 
Um, so what we did is we took content um, from our blog so that uh, um, when, when you're sharing these campaigns or these newsletters to your sphere, um, that it, it's not only uh, it, it's not only good content, but it's content that that links back to Howard Hanna and you as an agent because you know you, you want to keep that brand. And um, so it, it was really kind of a, a nice thing that we were able to put together. And um, I would say that this would if if you're going to not edit one, <laughs> this would be the one to not edit because this, <laughs> we're going to try to uh, we're going to keep up with it so that. We're, we're ensured that you, you could just let it run and there'll always be good content in there. Um, so I, we, we don't want you to have to worry about, oh, is there going to be another one, you know, in month 13? Yes, there will be. We will continually add ones um, so that you, you never miss a beat in a month. Um, so I'm, I'm just happy that we could do this and, and hope that it's uh, received well by everybody. I'm really excited about this one. Yeah, and this one's beautiful. Like, you guys did a fantastic job on the design and just pulling in, like, really, really great content. I, I was impressed with it, uh, just the, the breadth of content that's in here. And if, if you guys on the call, if you're going to run any campaign, um, this is the one that I would run for everybody. I would just sign everybody up for this one, let it run. Um, this one and the holiday ones are, are really easy ways to stay out in front of people with, either valuable content or just a, a, a nice thinking about you message. Um, but the content in this is fantastic. The team did a really, really good job. And I've seen a lot of these newsletters recently. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. So, so kudos to you and your team, Kevin. Thanks, Chris. Um, and so I just mentioned that you could send that campaign to everyone. Um, so I, I guess I should probably show you how. And so to, uh, you can send a campaign here from the campaigns dashboard, um, but you can also send campaigns from the My People screen. And so I'll open up the My People screen uh, and show you how to do that from, from My People. Once this loads. There we go. All right, and so as the My People screen is coming up, it's going to populate with all the people in... Uh, Kate's database and so you see everyone here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on filters because now that we have campaigns up a few new uh, new things have been added here. Uh, first is there's a section in filters for campaigns where you can see who's subscribed or unsubscribed to a campaign that you have running. And so right now Kate's only got neighborhood news and listing announcements running. So you see those here. She can look for people that are subscribed and she's got five subscribed to neighborhood news or people that are not subscribed. And so she's got 191 that aren't subscribed to Neighborhood News. And she can filter directly for those people and only look at them if she wants to. You can do this with any of your campaigns. So if you've added someone, if you've added everyone to the newsletter campaign, you haven't looked at it for a month or two, and you just want to make sure that everybody new that's coming to your sphere um, is added to that campaign, you can just click not subscribe for the uh, for the Hannah newsletter campaign, select it when it's down here. Um, and then you'll be able to add anybody that's new, uh, to that campaign really easily. And so I'm going to go ahead and click for everybody that's not subscribed to neighborhood news. I'm going to hit apply. And so that's going to select 191 people for me, um, which now gives me some bulk options for what I can do in campaigns. So I can select a couple of people and under my add to menu, I now have the option to add them to campaigns, groups, or neighborhood news. So I can add them to a group uh, really easily by selecting groups and then choosing the group out of this list that I want to add them to. And so for this, I'll add them to test. And then once I add them to a group, it's going to add this little card down at the bottom to make it really easy for me to filter for people in that group. Next, if I decide, hey, I want to add these people to a campaign, I click on campaigns. It's going to Give me a, hey, I want to double check, click confirm. And then it's going to show me what campaigns I have available to add them to, right? And so say I want to add them to my Hannah Holiday campaign, I would click the Hannah Holiday campaign and done, and it will add them to the campaign automatically for me. If I wanted to say sign everyone up 
for a holiday campaign or for the newsletter campaign, I could do that right from the My People screen by hitting Select All, which will select all 191 contacts, click Add To, Campaigns, it'll confirm, and then it'll also let me know if I'm missing an email or somebody is unsubscribed from me in the past and who those people are. And so 53 of these contacts are missing emails or have unsubscribed and I can actually look at the details of who those people are. So I can scroll through the list and know who, maybe I don't have an email for or who's unsubscribed from something previously. And so really easy uh, to do bulk features in campaigns from there. Um, so if you have a group of people that you work with that are past sellers and you wanted to send them the, the past seller requests or testimonial requests or even just holiday emails, you can do that really easily right from the My People screen without diving all the way into the campaigns menu. And there was one more thing in campaigns that I wanted to show because there was a question that I glossed over. Uh, it was about neighborhood news activity. And so someone earlier asked, hey, where can I see uh, neighborhood news activity a little bit more clearly? And so we've added two features around neighborhood news. Uh, the first is this, which is your activity feed for neighborhood news. And so the activity feed will actually show you uh, the last 90 days of activity uh, in neighborhood news. And so Kate's got five people subscribed. She's got a 50% open rate and a 0% unsubscribe rate for the last 90 days. Um, but it also shows all of the activity that people did. And so Stephanie Armstrong received the email. She opened it at 11.16 a.m. on the 17th. She opened it again at 11.28 a.m. I just got one today. Um, she received another one on May 17th. And so you can see all of the activity that Kate's had for the last 90 days on Neighborhood News. And so that's feature number one. Feature number two is actually in Engage Settings under Emails. Uh, we now have the ability to send you a, a Neighborhood News weekly report that just summarizes what your clients have done in Neighborhood News, which reports went out, for what zip codes or custom areas they went out for. And so you can get an email once a week uh, that'll say, hey, you've had uh, 121 neighborhood newses go out. The, here are all the people that looked at them. Here's what they viewed. If you got any questions in, um, it'll just send you a reminder. It's like a, a digest of what happened with your neighborhood news, um, just to keep you updated. And also all of that activity will also show on the dashboard. So we really wanted to, to surface that as much as possible. We got some feedback over the last year or two um, that clients really like neighborhood news, but agents wanted to see more of what was going on. Um, so that's why those two features have been included, one in campaigns and one to send you this weekly report. Okay, so we just covered a whole heck of a lot of stuff. Um, let's see what we've got for questions. Uh, since one copies a campaign item, say 4th of July with a date, how does one fix the date for the actual date of the new item? And so when you edit a campaign, you can change it. Um, emails and campaigns are two separate things. Emails are part of a campaign, but the cadence of when they go out is actually set in the campaign itself. And so that donut day email that I, that I created is just a standalone email. I can add it to any campaign. And when I add it, I can change the date uh, that it's triggered. And so I have all those options in campaigns. If we had a buyer closing last week, can you manually trigger this? Um, yeah, you can add the campaign and manually add that person uh, to the campaign. Uh, by doing that though, anybody that closes from now on is going to receive uh, that past buyer campaign as well. How far back can I go for past buyer and seller? Like I said, you can manually add um, so you can go as far back as you want. Um, do we have to manually add each person to a campaign or will it pull them in automatically? Combo. Um, has the timing of closed transaction follow-ups been tested for effectiveness? Is two weeks for a testimonial too long? Um, and so without any other follow-up, two weeks for a testimonial would be too long. That's why we have multiple touches 
one being a thank you, um, and then uh, the next one being a referral request, the next one being a testimonial, just so that you're not inundating them. Um, but that's generally what we found to be a good practice. If, if there's better data around it, or if anybody comes across more data around that, that than we have, then we'd love to review it um, because we're always looking for ways to optimize those campaigns. Um, the sell triggers from the MLS. I don't use the sales flow. I have a CRM I use. Uh, will it still trigger if I can set this up? Um, it's not gonna trigger automatically if you're not using our sales flow. But what you can do is you can run the campaign. If you're, if you're not gonna use the engaged sales flow, you can run the campaign and manually add people as they close um, and it'll have very much the same effect. They'll still receive all the same emails. Um, it's just you won't be able to take advantage of the automation if you're not linking the transaction in the sales flow. Uh, answer that one. I use home ad actions. The articles can be clicked. Um, I notified if these are clicked on. Uh, we don't do click reporting right now in, uh, in engaged campaigns because the brokerage can build whatever campaign they want. Um, so we really have no idea what they're gonna build in and how to report on the clicks on it yet. Um, it's something that we're trying to, that we're working out. Um, I don't know when we'll release a click tracking feature, uh, but right now what we've got is opens and unsubscribes. Uh, how do you get the newsletter campaign? Uh, to get the newsletter campaign, you just uh, select it from the library and add it to your campaigns. Uh, can Howard Hanna tell if the same email addresses are in multiple agents' databases? No, um, they cannot. Uh, and, and honestly, most consumers don't really care. Uh, one of the things that we found is that uh, if, you, if you receive a duplicate email from somebody, you're gonna unsubscribe from the one that you don't want. Uh, so most consumers don't actually care about receiving two of the same email. They usually just unsubscribe from the person that they're the least likely to convert with. And so it's a good way to know um, whether or not you'll convert with somebody if they unsubscribe because they're receiving a duplicate. Um, there is existing training on setting up groups. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be a big part of the training on Wednesday and Kate can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, Question on stay in flow. Can you add groups as a category rather than a sales flow category? Um, right now it's just sales flow categories, but we are going to look at adding groups as well. Uh, can the text campaign for buyer and seller be edited? Yes. Um, and so if you want to, if you want to make your own copy of the buyer and seller campaign and edit the text, you can definitely do that. Um, how do we link a transaction into Engage? Do we need to manually enter all of the data? Uh, no, you just have to enter the MLS ID. Um, so here I can show you. And so let me actually show you how to link a transaction. I think I have, here I'll just use testy. So we'll use testy Testerson and his buyer transaction so to link a transaction in Engage, and you can have as many transactions as you want, all you have to do is select the transaction type. And if you already have the MLS number, you type the MLS number in here, and we'll actually fill in all the rest of the information, uh, bedrooms, bathrooms, square feet, uh, based on that MLS ID. And so um, one, of the, one of the best practices, if you're not gonna use a whole sales flow, not that big of a deal, everybody does their business a little bit differently, Obviously, I would encourage you to use it as much as possible, but if you're not going to, um, link your transactions this way, and all you have to do is type in the MLS ID and hit done. And then when it closes, um, it's going to be linked to that contact record, and it can kick off automation for you. And so that's, that's one of the really good ways to, to be able to keep track of things in Engage, is having your transactions linked to their prospects. All right.
So if you've already set it up for the newsletter, can it be switched to Howard Hanna? To the Howard Hanna? I don't understand that question, unfortunately. I was trying to figure that one out myself. You might mean neighborhood news. That's what I was thinking, but you, they're two different ones. So I'm not, yeah, I that's would, the only thing I could think of with newsletter. Yeah, if it was neighborhood news, then it's just two way different use cases. And, and if somebody likes neighborhood news, they'll probably like the newsletter too. Uh, if I already closed with a client before running the recently closed, will they be automatically added or do I have to manually add them? Uh, you would have to manually add them if they're already closed before you start running a campaign. Maybe home actions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe it's home actions. Like I said, they're, they're, they're kind of different. And so in a lot of cases you can run them both side by side. Um, it, it would really come down to personal preference at that point, I think. How do you manually remove a name from the campaign? Um, so manually remove a person from a campaign or how do you take- uh, That's what I'm thinking, yeah. That's what I was thinking, yeah. Ah, how do you take out Mother's Day or Father's Day? Got it, got it, got it. Cool, um, great question. And so I will go back to my holiday campaign. I think those are two separate questions. I think they're asking two separate things, right? Okay. Well, I don't know if I understand the first one, um, but, I, but I can show the second one now. Um, and so for this one, you'd click edit schedule. Whoop. That's the wrong button. Okay. And so for this one, you'd click to remove a holiday like Mother's Day or Father's Day, you'd click edit schedule. And then see the little trash box here? You would just delete the campaign. And so you could just take it out. And, and then you can preview it and save. And this could be uh, Hannah Holiday campaign singles or no kids. Um, so Mother's Day and Father's Day aren't in there uh, for people without kids. So no, that was a, a great question. Hey Chris, um, I, first of all, thank you for for this today. It's it's been a it was a great great presentation. I know we did cover a lot. Um, you know, I do also know we're a little bit over our hour and a half that we set aside for it. Um, so if you don't mind, if you would just go to the homepage of Gohanna, I yeah, just no want to uh, just want to point something out here. Um, at the top on the right here, you'll see Engage CRM. I put 2.0 Resource Center. If you click on that, I, I'm sorry, over to the right. There you go. Um, so we updated this um, in, in conjunction with the, the, the updates to Engage. Um, and so there's a lot of great resources in here. Um, if, you, if you don't remember Moxie Support's email address or phone number, um, it's right here at the top of the page for you. Um, there's, there's four easy, um, quick things to watch videos on. And if you scroll just a little bit down, Chris, um, you'll see um, training documents, um, in, in you know PDF tutorials that you can uh, uh, you know there, there's a ton of information here and um, you know Moxie has, has done an incredible job of creating their own website of of literally just training and information um, so you will see um, under more training and tutorials on the right hand bottom side there um, that'll take you directly to um, any of these any of this information right on Moxie's website um, and there's a wealth of information here um, and, and this is one of the huge benefits of, of being a, a partner with Moxie works is that um, a lot of this information is already here for you to uh, to check out so whether you're on the home page of, of Howard of Gohanna and you want to hit the help in the bottom um, or you want to go to this engage CRM you know, um, resource center, uh, you know, there, there's a wealth of information anywhere you go to, uh, to get answers. Thanks. Thank you for that, Kevin.
Um, and for everybody that's on the call, our support team uh, works from eight, uh, 11.30 a.m. your time to 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So you can always get a hold of them uh, via chat or email. Um, and honestly, chat directly in product has been one of the, the best ways that we've been, been able to help people recently. It, it helps to be able to see what you're looking at. And our response time on chat is usually under two minutes. So if you hate being on hold or waiting for a dialer, um, I would highly recommend using that chat feature. Um, and, and also these updates aren't the, the last round of updates uh, that we're gonna be making to engage in campaigns. Um, as you guys know, uh, we continually make updates to our software uh, to, to make it more user-friendly, to, to make it more powerful, to, to help you in your business as much as we can. So um, you'll be seeing more updates come to campaigns over the next few months, uh, as well as more updates to engage as a whole and, uh, and present uh, or Hannah presentations also. And so we're, we're constantly working on this stuff um, please make sure and provide your feedback as well, uh, because that's how we that's that's how we know what to build and how to make things work well um, is from the feedback that we get from you. And so we really appreciate you helping us um, helping us build better tools for the industry. And I really hope that you you guys get some use out of uh, the the items that we've gone over today. Very good, Chris. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, this Thank is a great you. product. I think agents are going to absolutely love this. Uh, a lot of the updates that they've, they've really been hoping and waiting for. So we appreciate it. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate you all uh, taking the time to, uh, to hear me prattle on about this. So have a good <laughs> evening, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>